Kia and welcome back. Now the same ideas that we looked at last video to construct lines with vectors, turns out they can also be used to construct planes in three dimensions. So we're going to revisit these two concepts, that was the vector parametric and point normal equations, and we'll see that in 3D we can use these to talk about planes. Now before we get started, we're going to have a bit of a chat about what dimension actually means. We have a pretty good intuitive grasp of dimension. We know that something that's 2D is flat, like a computer screen or a piece of paper. Um, and we know that things that are 3D, they also have depth, like objects in the real world. And we can sometimes trick ourselves into seeing 3D. If you go to a 3D movie, the glasses trick our brains into perceiving what we're seeing is actually three-dimensional. And when we when it comes to mathematics, the definition of dimension kind of lines up with this, but it's a little bit more subtle perhaps. So we'll start with one dimension. Let's have a look at what it means for something to be one dimensional. So first off, a line is your sort of basic one dimensional object. If you imagine that you could stand on the line, then you only have one real choice of direction to move. Okay, we think of backwards and forwards in that direction as the same one. Okay, we can't go sideways, we can just go forwards along the line or backwards along the line and that's it. Any curve, for example a circle or an ellipse or a parabola, whatever curve you come up with, is also one dimensional because the same idea applies. Once you're standing on the curve, you can only move backwards and forwards along that curve, you can't step off and go sideways. Okay, so it doesn't matter if our curve lives in 2D space or in 3D space, it's still regarded as a one-dimensional object because of the degrees of freedom of movement that you have on it. So with that in mind, let's see if we can grasp two-dimensional objects. So a piece of paper is two-dimensional, because if you can, again, imagine yourself standing on it, um, you can not only move forwards and backwards, but also sideways. And any other direction is just a combination of these. So we could label one direction north and backwards south, and the other could, for example, be east and west. Then any other different direction will be a combination, like northwest or something. And again, it doesn't matter whether our plane is just living in R2, in 2 space, or whether it's in 3 space, it's still a plane and it's still two-dimensional. And just like curves are kind of like a generalization of one-dimensional things, uh, generalization of two-dimensional objects is a surface. Okay, it can be curvy, but if it's a surface, like a sheet that can be draped over something, it's a two-dimensional object. This idea helps us to think of our algebraic equations for lines in two-space in a different way, different way. So two-space itself, as we've just discussed, is two-dimensional. But when we specify an equation like ax plus by equals c, we're putting a constraint on the points in the plane that prevents movement except along the line. So it takes away one of our degrees of movement. So the effect of an equation is that it lowers the dimension by one. No equation is all of two space, all of R2. One equation takes us down one dimension to a one dimensional object which is a line. Alright, so in three space an equation like ax plus by plus cz equals d takes away one degree of movement. Okay, so that means we must be left with a two-dimensional object once we have a single equation. And it turns out this equation is in fact a plane, and we'll see why shortly. Right, if you need to, pause this video and take a breather for a second. Uh, it can take a while to get your head around these ideas, so Take a break, get a drink of water. We're going to start looking at actual equations for planes in 3D uh, next to come down to Earth just a little bit. All right, so let's look at equations for planes. We're going to do basically the same construction that we did for lines, just adapted to work with planes. So the first question that we might have is, what exactly do we need to specify a plane? Turns out there are a few different ways that we could do this, um, and we'll cover off these in turn. So first off, we could have a point on the plane, okay, the plane has to go through a particular point, and then we could specify a normal vector n that's perpendicular to the plane. And so once we've got a point and a normal, there's only one possible plane that fits the bill. Alternatively, instead of having a point and a normal, we could have a point and two different directions, okay, not parallel ones, that are parallel to the plane. 
Um, there's only one plane that can fit through the point and these two vectors, um, and that again will uniquely determine our plane. Finally, we could have three points, so long as they're not lined up in a straight line, they're not collinear. If we have only one point, that wouldn't be enough because we could just fix the plane through that point and then just wobble it around however we want. If we've got two points, then we could still rotate our plane around an axis connecting the two points and we still have lots of different planes that would go through those two points. So we need the third point to pin our plane down. And look, it turns out that actually our three points one can be turned into the two direction vectors and a point just by using vector subtraction to generate a couple of direction vectors from those three points. You can then use any one of the points as the point and you're back to our previous case. So really we're only going to consider the two. Um, the first one which is called point normal form and the second one which, is called, which will be a vector parametric equation of our plane. So let's um, roll up our sleeves and take a look at the point normal form of a plane. So suppose we know a point P on the plane and we also know a normal vector N. Then if we consider a general point X on the plane, then just as it was for lines, the vector X minus P sits on the plane. So it's aligned with the plane and therefore it's orthogonal to the normal vector. So we can write this down mathematically as N dot X minus P is equal to zero. Alternatively, we could expand out the dot product to rewrite this as n dot x equals n dot p. These are both different ways of writing the equation of the plane and point normal form. So let's look at an example. Suppose we have a plane through the point 1, 2, negative 1, and that 2, 3, 7 is a normal vector. Then we can form the point normal form as n dot x equals n dot p. Now let's just put in 2, 3, 7 for n x, y, z, that's just our general point for our vector x, and 1, 2, negative 1 for our point p. So we get 2, 3, 7 dot x, y, z is equal to 2, 3, 7 dot 1, 2, negative 1. Actually doing the dot product gives us an equation 2x plus 3y plus 7z is equal to 1. Okay, so this takes us from our point normal equation actually to a slightly more familiar looking one a general algebraic equation for a plane. So the general formula for a plane specified algebraically like this is ax plus by plus cz equals d, and this has a normal vector n is equal to a, b, and c. Now this trick always works. If we have an algebraic equation for a plane, we can always read off the normal vector by taking the coefficients of x, y, and z. Right, so we've covered off our algebraic equation case, which kind of was the same thing as our point normal one. Next on our list will be vector parametric equations. So if we want a parametric equation of a plane, it's a little bit trickier than for a line, but not hugely much. I was wrecking my brain for a good analogy, and the best I could come up with was an Etch-a-Sketch. I don't know if you've ever played with one of those before. With an Etch-a-Sketch, you have two dials. One moves the pointer left and right, while the other one moves it up and down. So we could, if we wanted, to call the output of our left-right dial S and the output of our up-down dial T. With a bit of luck, you know what I'm talking about, and you know that you can move the cursor to anywhere on the screen just by twiddling the knobs. Now, if our screen was the XY plane, then we could set up standard unit vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, representing the horizontal and vertical directions, then twiddling a knob is kind of like scalar multiplying that vector by s or t. Um, just like we did, talked about in our lines video. So if we start at the origin and twiddle the knobs a few times, our overall position will be s times 1, 0 plus t times 0, 1. Okay, so our general point is going to be x equals s times 1, 0 plus t times 0, 1. So it looks like our plane, in fact, requires two parameters to represent it. And in fact, this is always true. A two-dimensional object always requires two parameters to represent it parametrically. We can make this idea a bit more general. Instead of looking at the xy plane, we'll look at an actual plane sitting in 3D. Now, instead of our nice unit vectors, we'll just have two direction vectors u and v that lie on the plane and that don't point in the same direction. So if you know a start point x, then hopefully we can get to any point on the plane. So start point p. Hopefully we can get to any point on the plane by twiddling the knobs. So let's sketch a picture of this to help us understand what's going on. We start at a particular point P on the plane. 
Now let's indicate those two direction vectors as emanating from that point. Then let's say we want to get to this general point over here. I can sketch a parallelogram with sides lined up with the direction vectors and label each side of it with a scalar multiple of the direction vectors. Okay, there it goes. So take a moment to convince yourself that no matter where I put my point x, I can always draw a parallelogram like this and actually get to it by taking appropriate scalar multiples of u and v. So overall we get a vector parametric equation x is equal to p plus s times u plus t times v. So those are our two main equations for planes. Now it's useful to be able to convert between the two different forms because sometimes one is more useful than another. So let's start by looking at how you'd convert an algebraic equation, which comes from a point normal equation, to a parametric one. And this is an, an operation that you'll actually be doing a whole lot later, a whole lot a bit later in the course, but in maybe a slightly more abstract setting. So we'll start off with a plane equation such as 3x plus 2y minus z equals 3. And then by being inspired by what we did for lines, we'll let two of the variables this time be parameters, and we'll solve for the third one in terms of these. It often doesn't matter which ones you choose, so long as you can still get an expression for the remaining variable that makes sense. So I'm going to say let y equal s and z equals t. Then I'm going to solve for x. So x, if I rearrange my equation, is 1, that's 3 over 3, minus 2 thirds y plus 1 third z. Now I'm going to put my y equals s and z equals t in, so that equals 1 minus 2 thirds s plus 1 third t. Now we're going to write x, y, and z down as, as a vector. So x, y, z, we'll write down as one vector, is equal to, now the first entry is that thing we just wrote down, 1 minus 2 thirds s plus 1 third t. y, we actually got an expression for y, we just wrote it down at the start, y is just s. Likewise, z is just t. So what we're going to do now is we're going to separate that out into the numbers, the s's and the t's. So that equals 1, 0, 0, that's the number part, plus s times negative 2 thirds, 1 and 0, plus t times 1 third, 0 and 1. Okay, so that's p is 1, 0, 0, and the direction vectors u and v are negative 2 thirds, 1, 0, and 1 third, 0, 1. Now it's worth doing one more example because sometimes it's not so obvious what to do. So what if we have a plane like y equals 4? At first glance it doesn't perhaps look like it's in that form, but it is. Just It's just that the coefficients of x and z are just 0. So we couldn't say let y equal s in this case because y is stuck at 4. In this case we have to make x and z the parameters because it's the only way we can have a sensible expression for y at the end. So we'll say x equals s and y equals t. I'll let you work through the rest of the problem yourselves, but you should end up with x, y, z is 0, 4, 0, plus s times 1, 0, 0, plus t times 0, 0, 1. All right, now let's look at going from parametric to algebraic. Now this one's a wee bit trickier, because essentially we've got to take our three parametric equations and eliminate s and t from them. Now we're going to learn a systematic way of eliminating variables soon in the course, so I'm not going to go into great detail about how to do that exactly. But it turns out there is another way, and it's a slightly strange one because it only works for vectors in R3. So there's a special product called the cross product of two vectors, and what it does is to produce a vector that's orthogonal to two others. So given vectors u and v, then w is equal to u cross v, it's like the time symbol, will be orthogonal to both of them. So if u and v happen to be direction vectors for a plane, then u cross v will be normal to the plane. So, given a vector parametric equation for a plane, which is x equals p plus su plus tv, you can form a point normal equation, and hence the algebraic equation, by calculating the normal to be n equals u cross v, and by using the same point for your point. Okay, just s equals 0, t equals 0, so p. Now, I'm not going to go into how to calculate the cross product in this video because there are, it's a little bit tricky and there are a few things to talk about that. So that will be the subject of the next video. I don't want to get too sidetracked by the details here and this video has got plenty long enough. So just make a note of this. Um, we'll learn how to do our cross product in the next video and we'll see you there. Okay, so that was a lot to digest in one sitting. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, you're doing very well. Remember, drink lots of water, have some quality time with your friends and family. Kakite, I know. See you next time.